Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. You know, in today's woodworking world, there are lots of accessories that are readily available and they can come at a fairly cheap price. But a lot of times with that cheap price comes cheap manufacturing and no quality control. And sometimes it's hard to find the thing that fits exactly what you need. And that's where I think 3D printing comes in. As I'm designing and building my dust collection system, I wanted to find a blast gate that was affordable, worked well, and fit my particular dust collection needs. And there are some fairly cheap options on Amazon and even on Rockler and Woodcraft, but as I mentioned before, with that low price comes low quality. So I decided to scour the internet and look to see what was available out on the 3D model marketplace. And on Thingiverse, which is a free marketplace, um, I found these blast gates. The only problem with these blast gates was that they were for 2 inch central vac line only. They were not made for 4 inch pipe. So what I ended up doing was I imported these files into Cura and I scaled them up to the size that I need. It took a couple of trials, but eventually I was able to find the dimensions that made a nice snug fit with this 4 inch DWV PVC pipe that I use for my dust collection system. The thing I like about these blast gates is they go from fully open to fully closed with no gaps or grooves or anywhere that dust can accumulate and jam them up and they are what you would call self-cleaning so every time you close them any dust that does get caught in the wiping action of the blade just falls out the side here. In addition to the blast gates I also wanted a pipe hanger that was compact but still securely held the pipe and so for that, I ended up going into Fusion 360 and designing my own pipe hangers. There's nothing super fancy about these. The pipe just clicks in and they hold them. They're not going to grip the pipe. I don't think I'll be able to support a ton of weight with these, but this is more just for keeping the pipe close to the wall and I can probably also hang them from the ceiling like this and it'll just help keep the pipe from rattling around and moving um, as as the dust collector is under operation. Now the filament that I used to create these parts, I did use some regular old PLA filament just for some parts. But for the majority of these parts, for example, these pipe hangers were all printed with the Duramic 3D PLA Plus. I've mentioned this before, I think this color is really awesome. And the PLA Plus prints beautifully um, I know a lot of that has to do with how well your printer's set up, but I will put some close-ups here on some of these parts that I've printed because I just feel like they really came out beautifully with perfectly smooth top and bottom layers. On top of that, the white parts I have here were printed with Duramic 3D's PETG, and I've never used PETG before, and it took me a minute well, it took me more than a minute. It took me a couple of parts to figure out uh, how to dial it in. So these don't look great, but they work great. And then once I got it dialed in, once again, I have this flawless finish and these parts just printed beautifully. There's no real particular reason why I use PLA Plus or PETG over PLA. There are some claims that the PLA Plus is stronger than regular PLA. And then PETG has traditionally been used for high impact and functional item because it has a high wear resistance and it is a little bit more flexible and possibly more shock resistant than regular PLA. I guess we'll be putting all this to the test once I put all these together and get my dust collection system put together. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through the assembly of one of these blast gates and I will start plumbing my dust collection system in. I'm not going to record the plumbing of the dust collector in this video, but I might show some highlights of that in an upcoming video. So this blast gate consists of two body pieces, a slider piece, 
a bushing and a spacer. And in addition to this, you will need three one and a quarter long quarter by 20 bolts, six quarter inch washers, three quarter inch nuts, and I like to use the nylon insert lock nuts. a half inch by two inch long bolt, two half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. So what I do first is I drill out all my quarter inch holes, because there can just be some inconsistencies in the print. Once I get that done, I will slap my spacer in between the two body pieces. And start assembling. Once I get the three bottom bolts in, I can slip in the slider piece and make sure I insert the bushing in the hole here. Once that's in, I can slide my half inch bolt through. And now I just have to tighten everything up. I'm going to snug the pivot screw down just until there's some resistance on the slider. Now obviously since these parts are made out of plastic you don't want to crank down on them too hard. Uh, you will break the parts but as you can see this makes a full port opening for your dust collector and then it closes it right off as well. As you can see I already tested I already mounted a test hook over here on the side and you'll have to excuse the mess I ended up having to evict my clamps that were hanging right there to make room for the dust collection I'll have to relocate them somewhere in the shop. So in order to hang the pipe hangers I made these blocks out of some scrap wood and the wood's actually a full inch thick it's not three quarters of an inch it's a full inch and there's a reason for that and I'll explain it in a minute but the reason why I made these mounting blocks is this way I can firmly screw the mounting block to through the drywall and into the stud um, and then I can gently screw these to that block these are durable don't get me wrong but if I drive a screw into a stud and crank down on it just the tiniest bit too much, it will split the plastic. So we'll let the spacer block deal with that type of force, but there's also a second reason why I have these spacer blocks. That has to do with the flange right here on these blast gates. I can't get my pipe all the way up against the wall because when I install these blast gates, this flange probably pushes that out a good inch and a half from the wall. So this helps take up some of that space. And so this block plus this hook base here makes up the space so that this can be mounted on the horizontal sections of pipe without this hitting the wall.
Okay, so these two were just put right next to each other for demonstration purposes. You really only need a hanger close to any transition in the pipe. So anytime the pipe makes a 45 or a 90 degree turn, or anytime it changes direction in any way, that's where you want to put support. But here's a chunk of pipe right here. Drop it in and there it goes. And so now if I want to take my blast gate and I want to attach it right here on the pipe, I'm able to do that. So now my blast gate is accessible from either side and my pipe is secure. The more I do around the shop, the more I realize that a 3D printer is an indispensable tool for the modern woodworker. I have uploaded my files that I created, both the, the pipe hanger file that I created from scratch and this Blastgate file that I modified up on Thingiverse, and I will go ahead and link to the STL files to those Thingiverse pages down in the description below. They're free if you want to use them. I've already verified that they work on this 4 inch pipe, as you can see. Um, I really feel like they'd be useful for a lot of you guys that have wood shops and 3D printers. I want to thank Duramic 3D for sending me the filament to use in this demonstration video. I have used a lot of different types of filaments in my printers and I can tell you that Duramic makes some pretty good stuff. It, it prints really well and I have no complaints. If you are interested in getting some of your own Duramic 3D filament, I will link these products down in the description below. So that's all I have for this video. I want to thank you guys for sticking around and taking a look. If you have any questions about what I covered today, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. I read every comment and I respond to most of them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. And once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. My goal is to use technology and tradition to make some pretty cool stuff. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.